Hey folks, Walt Biscardi with you again, and one of the things that we've talked about a lot in the Color Forum and also in the Final Cut Pro Forum is prepping your timeline to go into color. Color is a very powerful color corrector, but at this time it cannot handle all the various file types that we can use in Final Cut Pro or even some of the things that we do in the timeline. So I've gone ahead and prepared this little uh, sample timeline here. got a piece of video. We go into a lower third. Very typical of editing. This next thing here, this is a still JPEG image. Put a little basic motion on it. This is an After Effects file. There's a little speed change. This shot here has a little smooth cam on it. And then finally our last shot. Now the very first thing that I do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this last timeline. I'm going to call it Cut 1 Sub Master. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up. There's a couple reasons why. First of all, color doesn't like these lower third graphics, so they have to go. One, two, three, they're gone. Now, if I didn't make this submaster and I went ahead and just blew those away, well, we'd have to make them again when we came back from color. Don't want to do that. I still have them here in cut one, so I'll just be able to copy and paste those graphics back in later. So, the next thing we got to do, color doesn't like still images right now. And this is a JPEG, plus I've got basic motion on it. So what I need to do is something called baking the effect. I got that from Bob Sliga, who actually now works on the uh, color team with Apple. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this cross dissolve. And we're just going to go ahead and export a self-contained movie of it. I'm going to do it right here from a timeline. Export, QuickTime Movie. Make sure you have Make Self-Contained selected. Just needs to be a video only. Let's call this the courthouse. We go ahead and import that courthouse yay double click that up bring that back over here we're just going to go ahead and edit that shot in we have now baked the courthouse it's no longer a still image with basic motion applied to it it's now its own self-contained movie okay our after effects file is fine the next thing here this little speed change we got a quick speed change going into another piece of video what would happen if you sent this into color you would actually go ahead and grade with it, and it would look correct in color. And you'd go ahead and grade it. And then when you came back to Final Cut Pro, it would be the same piece of video, but it would be in the wrong place in the shot. So you kind of, it's like color gets the information correctly, but then it doesn't send it back to Final Cut Pro correctly. So just like before, I'm going to say bus speed change. Again, make self contain is selected. Video only, save, that's a real quick one. Import, bus speed change, double click that. Edit that on into the timeline. Now the bus speed change is its own piece of video. It's no longer a speed change. Now the last thing here, this aerial of the high school, I've gone ahead and applied smooth cam to it because it's a helicopter shot and it was a little bumpy. Now it's nice and smooth. I could actually just remove the filter and then reapply the filter when I come back from color. But I'm of the mindset I like color to be the very last thing to touch my project before I master it out to tape. So I'm going to go ahead, Arial Smooth Cam, video only. I'm going to go ahead and export this with the filter already applied to it. Because sometimes I just get a little nervous that, you know, I apply a filter, maybe my video levels are going to change a little bit, maybe, I don't know. I just don't want to apply the filter after I come back from color. So now I've gone ahead and baked the smooth cam onto this clip. So we started here. There's our lower thirds. Here's our stills, the speed change, the smooth cam. We started there. Now we have a submaster where all the graphics have been stripped out. The still image has been turned into a piece of video. Our speed change has been baked into its own piece of video and brought back into the timeline. And our smooth cam had been baked and brought back into the timeline. Now we're ready to go to color. Send to color. Cut one submaster works for me. And lo and behold, there is our timeline ready to go. Now you notice I didn't do anything with the audio at all because as you can see, the audio isn't brought in here. So you can just leave all your audio track there. No reason to strip those out. So here's our timeline in color. And you notice I have two video tracks. So I left that courthouse sitting on top of this animation down below it because color sees both of those just fine. Our speed change shows up correctly. 
Everything shows up correctly here and I am ready to go ahead and color grade. And through the magic of video we jump ahead to every single shot has been color graded. Well, not really. I just went ahead and made every shot red so at least we know the difference between what I sent to color and what I'm going to send back. So now that we're all done rendering we say send to Final Cut Pro. And when I get back to Final Cut Pro I now have Cut 1 Submaster from color. And we can now see the shots are all clearly red because I just went ahead and goofed around with them in color. So now that I've got it back from color, I'm going to go back into my original cut one. Here's that original cut I had that had all my final graphics on it. I'm going to highlight this lower third, this lower third, this lower third. I'm going to say copy. And I see that the lower third starts on Gravel Springs Road. Go back here and I'm going to say pace. And the last thing I need to do is put this cross dissolve back on the courthouse. That was a 20 frame dissolve. And that is the only thing that Final Cut will have to re-render before I master it out to tape. But here's our final timeline again, which we prepped to send the color. And now we brought it back from color after the color grading, just simply replaced our graphics. I know what some of you are probably thinking. You're saying, well, you know, let's take a look at this. This was like a 20 second timeline that you took three graphics out of. You changed a little JPEG. You sent it off to color. Big whoop. I'm working on bigger projects. You know what? All the media is offline, but here's a real timeline. Here's a 22-minute show, and I've got one, two, three, four, five video tracks of graphics. This is how the show looks before it goes to color. So what do I do? I make my submaster. Here's the same timeline, now ready to go to color. All my graphic tracks are gone. All my speed changes are in there. And how does it look when I come back from color? Boom! I put all my graphics back in. Yeah, it can take longer to get your show into color. But one of the things that you're gaining is the ability to do in color what is very difficult to do or sometimes impossible to do in any plugin or filters that we have available in Final Cut Pro. Here's a project I did recently, and you can see here's the before, here's the after. Another shot. Look how dirty and muddy this is. Here's after it went to color on this side. This is one of my favorite shots. Look at how pretty the flowers are in the sky. Here's what it looked like. This is the original Beta SP shot here on the left. This is my absolute favorite. Look at this. Here's the original shot on the left. Here's the shot on the right. I might have been able to get this in something in Final Cut Pro, but I really, I just honestly don't know what I could have used to make the shot look that good. And think about this. Think about this. There's over 800,000 registered users of Final Cut Pro, the last number I heard. How do you set yourself apart from those 800,000 users and build your business? One of the ways I did that was to purchase a product called Final Touch HD for $5,000 a couple years ago. You now have it for free, included, for $12.99 with your Final Cut Studio. So you know what? Get in there. Start using this thing. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, you haven't really gotten into color yet, hey, pick up my DVD. Stop staring and start grading with Apple Color. In fact, go check out the Creative Cow store. There's a whole bunch of DVDs in there from a bunch of fine people. The Creative Cow Master Series. You can learn all kinds of great stuff. So folks, I hope this lesson helped you out a little bit. You know, get in there, start playing with color, and wherever you are in this fine world, have yourself a super day.